What's up, YouTube fam? This your boy, Charles Enoch. And to let y'all know, I have been busy, busy, busy. But I know y'all don't really care about that. So today, we will be going over how to pay your mortgage with your credit card. So a lot of my subscribers have asked me this question. So we are going to dive into it. This will be a two-part series. I want to thoroughly break it down of why you would use your credit card uh, when paying your mortgage. And before we get into it, go ahead, smash the like button, help a brother out. It only takes a couple seconds to hit that like button, and make it turn blue. And for those of you that are new to the channel and have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me and go ahead and hit the notification bell for all updates every Friday. All right, now that we have that out the way, let's talk about how you pay your mortgage off using your credit card. So the first thing you want to do is actually sign up and register your credit card to a site called Plastique. And Plastique is spelled down below for you, P-L-A-S-T-I-Q dot com. So what Plastique does is they will actually give your mortgage company a check or like an electronic payment for you and then they would just charge your card. Now this does come with a fee. It comes with a 2.5% fee. Now I know you're like, why would I pay 2.5% fee on top of my mortgage? That just makes no sense. And looking at it from a basic perspective, it does not make sense, but we will be going over the strategy of why you would want to charge it on your card and pay that 2.5 extra percent because we are going to be investing our money into other things that will actually make us more money. So this will be a two part video. So part one, we'll talk about how you structure your credit card and how you use your credit card to pay the mortgage payments. Part two, we'll talk about how do you invest your extra money since you have it on your credit card and you're able to keep more cash flow. How are you going to invest that extra cash flow to make more money. Now I know this sounds super confusing, but I do have the whiteboard back here and we will start breaking it down so it makes sense. So let's get to going, man. You know I love the whiteboard. Let's go. All right, so let's get started. We have the power couple, Paul and Patricia. Let's look at the income. They have $8,500 coming in total together. Their expenses, they're able to keep that down at $3,500. Cash flow, $5,000. Now, the mortgage, which is part of the expenses, is $2,000. Now, remember, uh, we have Plastique. So that is the website. When you go through the website, they are going to charge a 2.5% fee on top of the mortgage. So they're going to charge $50 extra dollars on top of that 2000 and remember this is included into the expenses that 2000 of the mortgage now one thing to note this is literally how me and my girl we have our system uh set up here in regards to the dates in the actual card so the card that i use to kind of offset that 2.5 percent fee is i use the city double cash credit card now the city double cash credit card gives me 2% back on all purchases. So they would give me 2% cash back on the mortgage purchase because it's got charged on my car. So I'm going to be getting $40 back. So now the fee is only 0.5%. So that would be a $10 difference, 50 and then minus 40 on that 50 would just give me a $10 difference. So my tip, uh, definitely use that CD double cash credit card to offset expenses. You can use um, travel cards as well. Sometimes they give you even more than uh, 2% uh, cash back when you use like the rewards card. So you're still able to choose whatever credit card you want. This is just the one that I use to offset some of that 2.5% fee. Now, another thing that we need to note my city double cash credit card is due on the first of every month. So that is the due date. And with usually with credit cards, you're able to change 
uh, the due date to whatever date that you want here. So mine's gonna be on the first. Now the statement closing date, um, it's usually gonna be the third through the fifth uh, of every month. So the statement closing date, they give you, it's a 30 day statement date. So it's always gonna vary, but usually between the third and the fifth of the month is when the statement closes and then another statement would come out. All right, let's get down to business. I know I've been throwing a lot of numbers at you and stuff, but if we look on the board, it's gonna be really simplistic of what we're doing. So remember, this is part one. If you guys kind of skipped over the intro, I know it does not make sense to have a 2.5% fee and it's charging you $50 and you're only gonna get $40 back, so you're losing $10. But on part two, we're going to show you how we would invest that money since it's going to just be on your credit card the charge but the actual cash of the mortgage you have available to use to invest so remember we're just trying to get the structure of part one of how to pay your mortgage with your credit card all right so mortgages most mortgages they're due from the first through the 15th they give you that grace period by the 15th and they're going to be charging you a late fee so let's say that you have your credit card and it's due on the first but the statement date is let's say it's due on the third through the 15th is when the new statement comes in so since you just got this card and there's nothing on the card what you're going to do is wait till the statement date closes let's say that you got it in December and you just never touched it so the closing statement date for December would be January 3rd through the 5th. So we're gonna wait till the closing statement date closes. What that's gonna do is on your statement, it's gonna say you have no payment for February. So what that means is it's gonna say February 1st, you don't have to pay anything. Even though you're gonna be charging your card for the statement, it's gonna say you paid nothing. So once we look and see that the statement closed, then we are gonna use Plastic, and we're gonna pay our mortgage through our credit card. So the mortgage is $2,000, Plastic is going to be charging a 2.5% fee, so they're gonna add on an extra $50 since you use their service to pay your mortgage with your credit card. Now, since we have the city double cash uh, credit card, it's gonna actually give us $40 for using our credit card. So we only lost $10 by using the plastic service. Now, what this does is, in your account, you'll have $7,040. How did we get that? We're gonna look at our cash flow. Our cash flow is $5,000. And then, the mortgage is $2,000. So since we use $2,000 on our credit card, that's $2,000 in our pocket. So that's how we're coming up with $7,040. Also, if it makes sense to look at it this way, the income of Paul and Patricia will be $8,500. Their expenses would only be $1,500 because the $2,000 is getting paid on the credit card. However you wanna look at it, this is how much we would have in a bank account. All right, so we're in the month of February and we're pretty much gonna be repeating a lot of the same stuff. So if we arrow over, we know our mortgage is due from the 1st through the 15th. Now, we're not gonna pay it on the 1st, obviously, because we have to wait till that statement closes on our credit card so it tells us what to pay for March. Now, if we're looking at the current statement date, remember, we had no payment for February. So when the statement closes for the month of February, it's going to say that we have to pay $2,050 for March. So we have not paid anything yet. We are still saving and we've increased our cash flow by $2,040 extra dollars, basically. So once we get back, once the statement is closed, once we get that closing statement on the third and the fifth, then that's 
when we would go to Plastique and we would pay our mortgage uh, with our credit card. Again, it's gonna charge us a $50 fee, 2.5% fee, which would equal $50. Since we're using our cash back credit card that gives us 2% cash back, then that gives us $40 in our pocket. So at the end of that particular month, in our account, we would have $14,080 in our account because we have not paid the card off yet. We are still, there's still a balance on the card and we have not, we don't have to pay it off as of right now. Now, when it comes close to the end of February, we're going to have to use $2,050 of the $1,480 to pay off our credit card. Because remember, it is due on the first of every month. So by the end of February, you use $2,050 to pay off the statement. All right, so we are at the month of March. And again, it's still the same particular thing that we're doing because we have it set up on a, a routine schedule here. So mortgage, the first through the 15th, we're not gonna pay it on the first. We have to wait for that credit card statement closing. And usually that's gonna be the third through the fifth of a particular month. So once we get the closing statement, it's gonna say, hey, for April, that's next month, for April we're gonna to have to pay $2,050. So we just pretty much just push the payment out by paying it on the credit card. So once the statement is closed, we're gonna use Plastique to pay for the March mortgage payment. And Plasti is gonna charge that $50, that's fine, because we're gonna get 40 of that back because we have a 2% uh, city credit cash back call. Now, once that transaction happens, our account balance, we're gonna have $19,070 into our account. Now remember, this is only part one because we will be using this money to invest into other endeavors. So even though it sounds silly to be losing $10 by paying on your credit card, you're actually freeing up all this cash flow and we are gonna be using that later on in part two and I'm gonna show you how to invest it where you're actually gonna be getting ahead and this is why we would ultimately be using the credit card to pay the mortgage. So by the end of March, before April 1st hits, we're gonna have to take out $2,050 to pay the credit card uh, due date, which is the first of every single month. All right, so now we go to the month of April and we got the routine down. It's the same particular thing. So the mortgage you can pay from the first through the 15th without any type of late fee. So we are going to wait until the statement date of our credit card closes, which is usually between the third and the fifth. Once it closes, it's gonna say that we owe $2,050 for next month, for the month of May. And when it does close, we're gonna use Plastique again to pay for this month's mortgage payment, which is gonna add that extra $50. We don't really care because we're gonna get 40 back so we only lost 10, but remember ultimately, we're gonna be investing all this extra money that we saved. So by the end of that particular month, we're gonna have $24,060 into our account. And before the first hits, before May, we're gonna to have to use $2,050 of that. So again, if you're wanting to pay uh, your mortgage with the credit card, I would advise you to set it up similar to this, having your due date for your credit card on the first. So the statement closing date, usually between that third and fifth, when we use Plastique, it is going to take some days for them to actually uh, pay the mortgage company. And again, if we are charging it, you know, let's say on the sixth, it only takes like two or three business days. So we will still be in well enough time to pay the mortgage off before the 15th. Now again, this is part one because that $24,060, we will definitely not be keeping that in a bank account. 
you already know that we don't use savings or checking accounts. We are always wanting to invest our money when we do velocity banking. So I just want to teach you guys the key aspects, how to pretty much set your credit card up right in the due dates and, and statement dates and everything right so you can pay your mortgage with your credit card and the extra cash flow because their cash flow is about five thousand dollars now that might be a lot for somebody but that you know it might be a little for other people so just adjust how it is for you but that five thousand dollar cash flow we're adding an extra two thousand dollars of cash flow every single month because we're using it on the credit card and with that extra cash flow it lets us invest just a little bit higher or a little bit more than just our normal cash flow. So we always want to just try to free up as much money as possible. Another thing to note too, uh, to put it in another perspective. So if we have a 2.5% fee for plastic and then our CD double back cash card is giving us 2% uh, cash back, that's only a 0.5% uh, fee. So if you can invest in a return over 0.5%, then that means that that extra $2,040 cash flow since it's on your card, if you put that um, into some type of investment that's gonna give us more than a 0.5% return, uh, pretty much a half a percent return, then you are actually going to do uh, very well and you think about it I mean we can put this into one of those um, high yield savings accounts the uh, ally saving account and what is it close to two percent so let's say if we put the 24,000 into the ally savings account it's going to give us a return way higher than a 0.5%, we would actually get our $10 back plus more. Let's say that it gave us like $40 or something just for having it in there. That means that you've made a profit. Now that's a really, really low investment. But again, since we have all this money stockpiled, you would wanna invest it. And if you can come up with an investment higher than the <laughs> half a percent, you're gonna be well off, which I believe that you can basically. So I hope that you guys had your pen and pad out, took some notes of how to structure this so you can use your credit card um, to pay your mortgage, keep a lot of that cash flow, and please stay tuned for next week's video. We will tell you how to use some particular strategies, even the strategies that I use um, when it comes to investing and using the Velocity Banking method. And again, if you guys have not subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't liked the video and you watched it through the whole way, go ahead and hit the like video. Leave a comment saying that, hey, I watched the whole thing. So I hope you guys have a terrific weekend. I will see you guys next week. Peace out.